there is always something happening around the world. We are here today to get you updated about events and programs from around the globe. A very good evening and warm welcome to the Ma Television Collective News. This is Shrasti Khatki. Moving on to the headlines. Sri Krishna Dhanmashtami being observed today without public celebrations and events. More than 2,000 coronavirus infections have been confirmed in Kailali. Another person has died of corona infection in Dhanusha. After the number of corona infections increased, Kapil Vastu goes lockdowns again. One missing after floods in Dhangari. Parvat Kurung took their initiative to rescue, relieve and settle the floods and landslide in Dolkha. Kalpana Paudal involved in the murder of Krishna Bahadur Bohura arrested. Local governments of Valley agreed to close all offices and activities except emergency works for three weeks. The UK-Nepal Trade and Investment Forum was formed in the UK. Lebanese government quits amid fury over bearded blast. Wall surpasses two crore coronavirus cases. Here we go for news in detail. Adherents of Vedic Sanatan Dharma are celebrating Sri Krishna Janmashtami today. This festival is celebrated with reverence and devotion by worshipping Lord Sri Krishna. Krishna is believed to have been born at midnight on Brother Krishna Ashtami in the Dwapara Yuga. Today is called Krishna Dhanmashtami and the night is called Muhuratri. It is also customary to stay awake all night by attending hymns tonight. In her best wishes on the occasion of Krishna Dhanmashtami, President Vidya Devi Bhandari sent a message wishing that the festival strengthen emotional unity by awakening mutual love, compassion and friendship. She also wished happiness, peace, prosperity and good health to Nepalese at home and abroad. Today, a big fair is being held at the famous Krishna temple at Mangal Bazar in Patan. However, the fair has been postponed this year due to the risks of coronavirus infection. Similarly, a puja at Nautan Dham in Bishnupura Nilkantha and Kagashwini Manohara municipality that used to be conducted every year has been cancelled. The concerned municipalities have been doing miking to inform the public not to gather for celebrations. More than 2,000 coronavirus infections have been confirmed in Kailali. In the last 24 hours alone, 24 people have been infected with the coronavirus in three districts of the state. Tests conducted at the Surkhet based State Hospital, Veterinary Disease Investigation Laboratory, and Dai Lake Hospital Laboratory confirmed the infection in 24 more people on Monday. According to the latest statistics, the number of infected people in Karnali has reached 2003. According to the Health Services Division, 1,880 people have returned home after recovering in Karnali. In Karnali, six people have died so far and 117 are in isolation. Another person has died of corona infection in Dhanusha. A 60-year-old man of Bidiha municipality, ward number 8, has died due to the infection. A person who died due to corona has also contracted tuberculosis, according to the coordinator of the Corona Infection Provincial Hospital. Three people have died of coronavirus infection in Dhanusha so far. After the corona infection started spreading at the community level, couple was to lock down again for six days. The lockdown has been carried out from 5 a.m. on Shravan 27 to 12 noon on Shravan 32nd. It is mentioned in the information issued by the District Administration Office that all the services except the essential services have been shut down. It has been decided to close government offices, banking institutions, markets, shops, private and public vehicles in the district. After the infection was seen among health workers, shopkeepers, bank and employees of financial institutions, the lockdown has been carried out. The decision has been taken in accordance with Section 6.3 of the Local Administration Act 2028 and Section 2 of the Infectious Diseases Act 2020. One person has gone missing in Dhangari due to incessant rains. Dhan Bahadur Vista 54 of people kept in Manohanyal village municipality 3 has gone missing. According to the district police office, Vista was swept away while crossing the Gedan River. Similarly, incessant rains have damaged 25 houses in Dhangari, sub-metropolitan area and inundated 250 houses. According to Inspector Thapa, houses in Dhangari, sub-metropolis 2, 3, 4, 5 and 8 were severely damaged. Minister for Women, Children and Senior Citizens Parvat Kurung has taken initiative for the rescue and relief of the flood and landslide affected areas of Dolkha. Dozens of families have been displaced in Gauri Shankar Gaon Palika Ward No. 5, 6 and 8 due to floods and landslide caused by heavy rains on July 7. Minister Gurung himself has visited the affected area for relief and settlement management of the locals. Gurung, who reached the affected area along with the heads of the District Natural Disaster Committee and all the local levels, met the local victims including Tunitar and Gurumfi. 
During the discussion with the minister, the locals said that they were at high risk of floods and landslides and demanded proper management. The disease has been identified as Suresh Sita Koti, 28 of Sunakhani in Bari Kalan Chok Municipality 8. There was huge financial loss as well. It has been found that Kalpana Mudbari Powdal was involved in the murder of Krishna Bahadur Bohura of Dang, whose body was found in a suitcase in Gangabu, Kathmandu, on Sunday. Powdal, who was involved in Bohura's murder, was made public by the Kathmandu Metropolitan Police and the Metropolitan Crime Branch at a joint press conference on Tuesday. Police also recovered a sharp weapon used in the incident, a hammer used for hitting, blood-stained gloves, a piece of mattress and a black shawl used to tighten the throat. According to the police, Bohora and Kalpana, who reached Kalpana's room on Saturday night, drank alcohol together. Also, it has been found that Kalpana put a sleeping tablet in the curd and fed it to Bohora after she got drunk. In a police statement, Bohora admitted that she had killed Bohora with a hammer after giving a sleeping tablet. Speaking at the press conference, Kathmandu Police Campus Chief SSP Shamlal Gavali said that Bohora and Kalpana got acquainted through Facebook. He informed that Kalpana's daughter was also involved in the management of the Bohra's body after the murder. He said the investigation was carried out using a trained dog. A headless body was found inside a suitcase in Gangabu Kathmandu on Monday morning. A few meters away, her head and legs were found in a zebra bag. Police arrested the woman and her daughter from Dandi in Chitwan on Monday and brought them to Kathmandu. The local labels within Kathmandu Valley have decided to close all services except the essential ones for three weeks. A meeting of the Municipal Mayors Forum and Association of Mayors in the Kathmandu Valley on Monday decided to suspend all services except emergency for three weeks. Announcing the decision after the meeting, Mayor of Madhapur Timi Municipality Madan Sundar Shrestha said that it was decided to close all services except essential to reduce congestion as there is a high risk of infection at the community level in the valley. The meeting also decided to request the government to stop the operation of public transport again till Badr 15, saying that the transition has spread rapidly after the full operation of public transport. It has been decided to arrange quarantine inside the factories and industries and allow them to operate only after fulfilling the health standards as the risk of infection has also increased due to the daily movement of the workers in the factories and industries. The meeting also decided to request the government to maintain the deadline for renewal of social security allowance till the end of assaults. The forum has also decided to request the government to tighten the entry points of the Kathmandu Valley, saying that there is a danger of coral infection reaching the community level due to the dense population in the Kathmandu Valley. The mayors also decided to request the federal government to operate an integrated quarantine in accordance with the quarantine management and operation regulations and to prepare the local level to assist in the management. Considering the possibility of the spread of the infection, it has been decided to strictly prohibit the activities of rallies, gatherings, strikes, processions, etc. in support of or against the government and to request the government to stop the gathering of cultural activities, the forum has also decided to coordinate the issue of people moving around without wearing a mask and taking action against those who do not use the marks properly. As business areas and shopping malls, hotels, restaurants, etc. are high-risk areas for COVID-19 infection, it has been decided to strictly follow the high vigilance standards and take action by monitoring it regularly. The meeting also decided to focus on the number and quality of quarantine for infection prevention rather than just increasing the scope and rate of testing as the financial burden of PCR testing will be heavier and its usefulness will be limited to a limited period of time tested. Designed to allow vegetable trade only in the evening and prohibit trade, construction work, sidewalks, business, businesses done in the wheelbarrows and bicycle till September 30 were made. The UK Nepal Business and Investment Forum was formed by the British entrepreneurs, businessmen and investors in London on August 5 and 10. The decision was taken at a meeting chaired by Lord Sheikh, members of the House of Lords of the United Kingdom and Vice Chairman of the All-Party Parliamentary Group for Nepal, according to a press release issued by the Nepalese Embassy in London. Atam Sandhu and Treasurer are Bikas Nepal, the Ambassador of Nepal to the United Kingdom. Dr. Durga Bahadur Swedi is the patron of the forum. The program was inaugurated on Monday. Speaking on the occasion, Ambassador Dr. Steering, 
that the government of Nepal is implementing an investment-friendly policy for economic development. Suvedi said that the UK-Nepal Trade and Investment Forum would be a cornerstone in the promotion of trade and business investment between the UK and Nepal. The newly elected chairperson of the forum and British MP Lord Sheikh expressed his commitment to contribute to the economic development of Nepal by making a positive contribution towards attracting British investment in Nepal and increasing the trade between the two countries. Lebanon's Prime Minister announced his government's resignation on Monday, saying a huge explosion that devastated Beirut and triggered public outrage was a result of endemic corruption. The August 4 detonation and a port warehouse of the what authorities said was more than 2,000 tons of ammonium nitrate killed at least 163 people, injured more than 6,000 and destroyed swathes of the Mediterranean capital, compounding months of political and economic meltdown. He blamed the disaster on endemic corruption and said those responsible should be ashamed because their actions had led to a catastrophe beyond description. While the Avs move attempted to respond to popular anger about the blast, it also plunged Lebanese politics deeper into turmoil and may further hamper already stalled talks with the International Monetary Fund on the financial rescue plans. The talks launched in May were put on hold due to inaction on reforms and a row between the government, banks and the politicians over the scale of vast financial losses. President Michel Aoun accepted the designation and asked the Avs government formed in January with the backing of Iran's powerful Hezbollah group and its allies to stay as a caretaker until a new cabinet is formed, a televised announcement said at White House, a U.S. President Donald Trump said the explosion had triggered what he called a revolution but did not comment further. Ahead of the Arab's announcement, demonstration broke out for a third day in a central Beirut with some protesters hurling rocks at security forces guarding an entrance leading to the parliament building, who responded with tear gas. For many ordinary Lebanese, the explosion was last straw in a protected crisis over the collapse of the economy, corruption, waste and dysfunctional governance, and they have taken to the streets demanding root and branch change. The entire regime needs to change. It will make no difference if there is a new government, Joy Haddad, a Beirut engineer, told Reuters. We need quick elections. The system of government requires Aoun to consult with parliamentary blocs on who should be the next prime minister, and he is obliged to designate the candidate with the greatest level of support among parliamentarians. After former Premier Saad Hariri stepped down in October 2019 amid anti-government protests over perceived corruption and mismanagement, it took more than two months to form Diab's government. Diab's cabinet was under severe pressure to step down. Some ministers had already resigned over the weekend and Monday, while others, including the finance minister, were set to follow suit, ministry and political sources said. The coronavirus pandemic chalked up another horrific milestone Monday as the world surpassed two crore recorded cases of infection from the tiny killer that has suspended life just above everywhere. The number as of 1015 GMT was 2 crore 2,577 cases with 733,842 death records. According to an AFP tally of official sources, in yet another staggering landmark, the death toll is expected to surpass 750,000 in a matter of days as the global health crisis that began late last year in China raises on. As more things once unthinkable became a harsh reality, having to wear a face mask in touristy spots in Paris or resolve a spot on Copacabana Beach in the Rio via an app and then social distance on the sand, the World Health Organization urged people not to disappear. Behind these statistics is a great deal of pain and suffering, but I want to be clear, there are green shoots of hope, WHO Chief Tedros Andanom Gabriel said, it's never too late to turn the outbreak around, he said. He gave examples of countries that have successfully clamped down on COVID-19, such as Rwanda and New Zealand, which said Monday it plans to open a virus-free travel and bubble with the Cook Islands, with much of the world cut in a cycle of dispiriting outbreaks and economically crushing lockdowns, all eyes are on the race for a vaccine. A WHO overview said 165 candidate vaccines are being worked on around the world, with six reaching phase three of the clinical evaluation. But the WHO's emergencies director Michael Ryan warned that a vaccine was only part of the answer. Pointing to polio and measles as disease with vaccines that have not been fully eradicated. Infections have been rising ominously in Western Europe, which has also been sweltering through a heat wave with temperatures soaring above 35 degrees Celsius. The blistering heat sent crowds flocking to beaches at the weekend despite health warnings about the risks of infection. 
in the Paris region, people aged 11 and over are now required to wear masks in crowded areas and tourist hotspots. This is all for now. We'll be back with more news and updates. Till then, keep watching them on television. May all the sentient beings be at peace. Stay safe.